Good afternoon, Ms. Nziweni. Good afternoon, Acting Chief Justice. How are you this afternoon? I think I'm well under the circumstances. Okay, all right. And which ones are the circumstances? <laughs> Is it being before us? Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, welcome to this session of the interviews of the Commission. Thank and thank you for availing yourself for consideration for appointment as a judge of the Western Cape Division of the High Court. You hold uh, a BPROC and an LLB, is that correct? Indeed so, Acting Chief Justice. Uh, please bring your mic closer to you so everybody will hear you. Okay. And you got both degrees from the University of Forte. Indeed. Uh, you got your BPROG in 1997 and your LLB in 1999. That's correct. <clears throat> yes. And you started your working career as a maintenance clerk uh, in the Department of Justice, that is in the courts, is that right? Yes, and, and that was a vocational work which I did. I'm sorry? It was a vocational work which I did. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and then uh, you were a commercial law tutor for six months at Forte. Indeed, that's correct. And then you became a public prosecutor in July 1999. Yes. And uh, in 2001, July, you became a junior state advocate up to April 20, 2003. Indeed, at Grahamstown TPP's office. Yes, and uh, then you were appointed as a district court magistrate in July 2003. In Somerset West, yes. And you worked as <coughs> a district court magistrate from July 2003 to October 2013. Yes. And then in January 2011, you were given an opportunity to act as a regional court magistrate up to March 2012. Yes, indeed. And then uh, in 2013, you were appointed as a regional court magistrate. Correct. And that's the position you continue to hold. Indeed. OK. Uh, tell me, have you done civil cases as a magistrate? Quite a lot. Uh, Quite a lot. Indeed. And that started from when? When you became a district court magistrate? No, in 2009. In 2009. Correct. And in 2009, you were, were what, 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 uh, were you no longer a district court magistrate at that time? I was still a district court magistrate. Yes. So you didn't uh, do civil court matters from the commencement of your appointment as a district court magistrate, no. but you started doing them in 2009. Correct. And uh, when you became a regional court magistrate, did you continue to do civil matters as well? I was actually appointed at a seat which did not do uh, civil matters. I then approached the regional court uh, president and I asked him if he can afford me the opportunity to continue with civil work. Yes. Just let me just double check. Is everybody able to hear her well? Okay. Oh. Yeah, there is something wrong with my ears. <laughs> okay, all right. So, and then the re regional court president allowed you to do them. Indeed, because of my reputation in civil. Yes. Now, so that means that... Uh, you have been doing civil cases as a district court magistrate and as a regional court magistrate yeah. over a period of about, what, 11 years, 12 years? Pretty much, pretty much. Yes. Uh, I actually uh, juggled two courts. Yeah. I was doing an exclusively criminal work court simultaneously with the civil court. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Um, uh, what branches of law would the case, civil cases that you have been doing in the magistrate's court and regional court uh, fall under? Uh, various branches. 
I did delict contract. I was fortunate to be at a court which was very busy, Somerset West. Uh, if I may say that uh, the litigants there, they are very litigious. They, they like to litigate. So I was exposed to various branches of civil work. Yes. Yeah, it's quite a, a busy court. Yes. Do you, do you enjoy civil work more than criminal work it's or not really? It's actually my passion, acting Chief Justice. Yes. And um, did uh, the Magistrates Court and the Regional Court have motion court as well? Yes, quite a lot. And you were involved in that as well? Indeed. Okay. Now, in uh, paragraph 8 of the questionnaire, mm. uh, you were asked to finish particulars of membership of a political party, past and present. You said none. Yes, that's you correct. confirmed that. Indeed. And you, in paragraph 9, you were asked to finish particulars of community and other organizations of which you are or have been a member in the past 10 years. You said none. That's correct. Yes. Now, have you had the chance to act in the High Court? I was fortunate enough to be invited by the Judge President at the beginning of this year. Yes. And I'm still there. And um, so far, have you done both civil and criminal trials at the High Court? Uh, I did only one criminal trial, and fortunately, the bulk of the work which I did was civil work. Yes. And you have done motion court as well? Yes, quite a lot. Yes. Judge President? Pass, CJ. Nothing at this stage. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Stewart, if you have questions for the candidate, I now give you an opportunity to put questions to the candidate. Thank you, Acting Chief Justice. Um, can I ask two questions, please? The first is, um, pertaining to your judgment of the Epstein judgment, uh, which was, as I understand it, an urgent interdict. Yes. Um, I'm just trying to understand, in paragraph 25, you deal with the apprehension of irreparable harm, mm -hmm. that you find that if the interdict to stop the building work is not given, the, um, the applicants will suffer irreparable harm. Indeed. And on paragraph 26, you then state that the construction is not at an infancy stage, mm -hmm. and the applicants have made an application to not oppose the occupancy certificate, which implies that the building work was finished at the time that you gave the judgment. So I'm just trying to understand why an interdict would be granted when the building work was finished, or I'm not understanding yeah. it very well. It, it was not quite finished. Uh, there were aspects of, of, of the building work which were still had to be done. And that wasn't, that was sufficient to still consider ongoing irreparable harm? Indeed so, indeed so. Because the courts are not really inclined uh, to, to grant orders because there was also part B of, 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 of the matter which um, the court still had to decide on. For the review, is that correct? Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, thank you. And then turning to the uh, question of review, um, as you know, most government matters in courts are often reviewed where decisions of the organ of state are taken on review. And in that regard, there's two different ways in which reviews can be brought. One is under PAJA, the Promotion of Administrative Justice Act, and the other is under the principle of legality. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell me your understanding of the difference between those two types of reviews and how it came about? PAJA is statutory, yes, and then uh, the other one is in terms of the law. It can be brought, uh, for instance, uh, a, a review can be brought from the magistrate's court to the high court. Uh, and a review under the principle of legality, in other words, not a judicial review, but a review for administrative action, but not under PAJA. Have you any experience of those? Not at all. Thanks, Acting Chief Justice. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, I am told that uh, uh, your voice is soft, is too low. Oh, I'm sorry uh, for you that. You are to uh, speak up, so at least I'm not the only one. Okay. <laughs> I no, I'm, so, I'm that, sorry about that. Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, Judge President Lambo. Good afternoon, Ms. Nziweni. Good afternoon, Judge President. Um, it's just as a basic question I want to ask you. There is a circuit of the division in the Western Cape. Am I correct? Indeed. Yeah, it does both civil and criminal. Indeed. So, you're sitting in Cape Town, you're approached by, one of your matters is from a financial institution that seeks to foreclose on a property located in an area under the circuit. Mm -hmm. And the value of the claim is 100,000 rands. And the, the, lead, the homeowner is unrepresented. Mm -hmm. How would you deal with that matter? Uh, currently, there is a decision from the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, which has decided that uh, a high court cannot refuse to hear that particular matter because the high court enjoys concurrent jurisdiction with the magistrate's court. So I'm now bound by the high court, rather by the Supreme Court of Appeal decision. Sorry, you meant inherent jurisdiction. Concurrent jurisdiction, because now the High Court enjoys jurisdiction and the Magistrates' Court also enjoys jurisdiction. Now, what about the fact that the homeowner is unrepresented? With inherent jurisdiction, I, I can step in and say it's going to be unfair for a person from George to come to Cape Town. So you would send the matter to the second court? Indeed. Okay. Thank you, Acting Chief Justice. Thank you. Uh, Shabangu, uh, Commissioner Shabangu Ndawe. Thank you, ACJ. Good evening, uh, Mrs. Ntiweni. Good evening, Commissioner. Mrs. Ntiweni, I, the, the ACJ asked you about paragraph 9, mm. in which you responded that you, your answer was Nande. I, I don't know whether, can you share with the, commis with the commission in what extent are you involved in assisting the community with regard to transformation. As we all know that this subject is one of the subjects that is very key, especially in the province that you are coming from. Fortunately, I am a member of the Association for Regional Court Magistrates of Southern Africa. And I happen to be the secretary of that organization provincially. Uh, as such, we get involved in various matters uh, which are of charity work. We do a lot of charity work. Uh, for instance, we've done um, a drive with the Boys Town in Cape Town. We also did some charity work with uh, elderly people, so I am involved. Thank you. Thank you, Isitu. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Mutolo Zepi. Zepu. Uh, I'll, I'll pass, I wanted to. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, commissioners on the digit, on the... I, I thought you had recognized me, uh, Dr. Oh, I'm not on the list. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. You have the floor. Yeah, thanks. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, Acting Commissioner Chaba. Yeah. Yes, and uh, good good afternoon, uh, Ms. Nziweni. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, I just want to test you on your 
understanding of the character of our democracy. Uh, they say it is uh, both participatory and uh, representative. Another basis of it, of, of which uh, a few pieces of our uh, legislation uh, were overturned by the Constitutional Court. And uh, can you elaborate on that? Uh, what's the meaning of, 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 of it? Participatory democracy. Yes, the, the, character, uh, the character of our democracy being representative and participatory. What does that mean in actual effect? Uh, I, I won't venture uh, an answer on that. Uh, I haven't done lots of constitutional matters. As such, uh, I'm not quite aware of those concepts. That's fair. Thank you so much. Um, have you had the opportunity of uh, dealing with a matter where you are asked to declare a piece of legislation unconstitutional and uh, decide on appropriate relief? No, no, not yet, not yet, Acting Chief yeah. Justice. Yes. Um, when you when you sit in criminal appeals and you are asked as a, a panel of a full bank, for example, to deal with, uh, and you deal with uh, an appeal against sentence, uh, what room do you have to interfere with the sentence given by the court accord? Are you free to interfere if you think it's, it was a wrong sentence, or uh, what constraints are there? Uh, I, I cannot interfere merely because uh, I am of the view that it was wrong. Hmm. I can only interfere if I'm of the view that it was harsh and inappropriate. Uh -huh. And um, can you share with the commissioners your understanding of the doctrine of separation of powers? It's a very important doctrine in a constitutional democracy. Uh, what it means, it entails that the different spheres of the state cannot interfere with one another. For instance, the executive cannot interfere with the judiciary. Mm -hmm. But where the Constitution allows that interference, uh, then it would happen? If the Constitution yeah. allows the interference. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we live under the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Constitution is supreme. Mm -hmm. If the Constitution says it can be done, then it can be done. It can be done. And if it's legislation that allows it to happen, what, do you, what would you say? The Parliament passes legislation that allows that to happen. What would you say about that? Then that particular legislation mm -hmm. will be contrary to the values of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So that piece of legislation cannot be sustained. Yes. Any further questions? It looks like oh, uh, Commissioner Slemmer. Thank you, ACJ. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Commissioner. Could you just share your um, judicial philosophy with the Commission? Mine is predicated upon the principle of justice. I happen to be a daughter of an interpreter. As such, I uh, had the opportunity to be exposed to court hearings. And I was still very young. Then I would notice this particular person who is unrepresented. And then there and there, I told my father that I wanted to be the person who would represent that person. Uh, I believe firmly in justice, 
And I believe that justice is the vehicle to protect people, particularly the most vulnerable people. If I may, ACJ, uh -huh. and how do you apply that principle of justice in a civil court? You have to be fair to all the parties who are appearing before you. You have to dispense justice impartially. Uh, you have to listen to litigants. Thank you. Uh, Jay, may I ask my question, please? Yes, uh, please go ahead, uh, Commissioner Kane. Thank you very much. Uh, Could you please just con uh, further the conversation you've just had with the two commissioners that have asked you about the application mm. of those principles to the example that uh, J.P. Malambo gave you? Mm -hmm. um, you ended up saying to him that you prefer the case in yes. question with a financial institution was suing um, a data to the George Regional Court. Um, what is the principle behind that? Access to justice. Um, it's a very important principle because the further you take the litigation from the litigant, essentially you are closing the doors of the court. So the principle for me, which is more important is the principle of access to justice. Thank you. Thank you, ACJ. Thank you. Uh, I think we have come to the end of the interview. Uh, the commissioners who are on the virtual platform, I think I had given them a chance, I hope, I'm not mistaken, apart from Commissioner Kane. Yes, we have come to the end of the interview. Thank you very much uh, uh, for availing yourself. Uh, you are now excused. Thanks to you, Acting Chief Justice and the Commissioners. Thank you.